So I'm here with something very, very interesting. So I've invited an airline pilot and me being an ex-aircraft maintenance engineer, I thought it would be interesting to see the difference in our professions. So without further ado, let's get to the video. Tell us about yourselves. Hello guys, this is AJ. Uh, first of all, please let me say thank you to Dinyawin for this idea and for inviting me here. Welcome back everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video and benefit uh, from what we are going to say. And for those of you who doesn't know me, my name is Dinwan Gawata. I'm an aeronautical engineer. And thank you very, very much AJ for joining us today. And I believe this is gonna be a very immersive session. What is your work like? Um, so the work environment is a non-routine one, um, which is very different to your usual Monday to Friday job. Uh, for example, we have flights um, in the morning, afternoon, evening, and night. Uh, some of flights will be short, some will be quite long, like let's say four to five hours each, um, each way. Um, so the roster will be a mix of everything, a uh, mix of uh, flights in the morning or in the evening. Um, but usually we fly about four times a week. Allow me a few seconds from your valuable time. 94.4% of you who watch my channel haven't subscribed to my channel. Now, if there's anything I can improve on so I can win your subscription, please put them down in the comment section. Now, the importance of subscribing to my channel is my long-term goal is to one day when I start generating income, 10% of that income will be contributed to students who have no means of financial assistance to fund their education and i will use that money to help someone who is really in need so to make my dream a reality i really need your help so if you haven't subscribed to my channel please consider subscribing and if you have already subscribed to my channel thank you very much let's get on with the video so in aircraft maintenance, in my experience, we got two shift patterns, eight hour shifts and 12 hour shifts. Now the eight hour shifts, they go from Monday to Friday and the 12 hour shifts, they can fall on any day. However, you will get enough rest time as well with this 12 hours. So for example, my time in AirAsia, we had three 12 hour shifts on and three days off. So that was good. And a good thing about uh, being an aircraft engineer is like you won't work with one thing, you would change in different sections like Tomorrow you might be working with cabin maintenance tasks and next day you might be working on wings. Now obviously when you're on a big company you will be scheduled to one system. Now if you're in a small MRO you'll be rotating around the aircraft pretty much every single day. How can one be an airline pilot or aircraft engineer? Uh, so to become a pilot you need to join a flying school or a flight academy in your home country or in the country where you can live and work. So for example if you want to fly in the US you, you will need an FAA license so it's better to study in the US. If you want to study in, if you want to fly in Europe it's better to study in Europe, get your EASA license because, which will allow you to fly in Europe and then uh, you're ready to get the job in Europe. Um, on the other hand, if you want to fly in Australia, for example, it's better to study in Australia because you will need an Australian license. Uh, also, you will need to be at least 18 years old, uh, completed your high school, uh, able to pass a medical test, the entry test, and also you will have to have around 100,000 US dollars in your pocket. Now, when it comes to aircraft maintenance engineering, there are a few steps you need to follow. Like AJ said, you need to be very careful about the country you're going to select. Now, if you're someone from Italy who wants to go study in Singapore for a change, now, if you go study in Singapore, you will be studying under Singaporean civil aviation regulations. Now, that qualification might not be recognized in Italy or in the United Kingdom. So it's very important you select where you want to become an aircraft maintenance engineer. Now, once you know that, See, you need to select a part 147 school. A part 147 school is an approved school by the civil aviation authority of that country. You can find this list in any civil aviation authority website. Now, once you fi find that, you need to decide whether you're going to be an electronic engineer, aircraft electronic engineer or an aircraft mechanical engineer. If you want to be an aircraft electronic engineer or electrical engineer, B2 
is the category that we assign now you need to go study a b2 program now if you want to be mechanical mechanical divides into further four sections four main sections there's a lot however there's four main sections that's b1.1 that is fixed wind turbine engines they are a uh, few examples are a320 787s uh, D Havilland Q400, ATR 7242, these are a few examples of B1.1 type of aircrafts. And second one is B1.2, small train aircraft such as Cessnas, Pipers. And then next you get B1.3, which is turbine helicopters, and then B1.4, which are piston helicopters. Now, now when you know your category and when you have completed your part 147 training, then you need two years of experience to get your license now in order to gain experience you need two years of experience logged in somewhere and this somewhere is your logbook cap 741 as we call it in the uk now you fill in your logbook you get it signed by your licensed engineers and also quality department and when you have collated two years of experience you can send it to civil aviation authority and get your blank aircraft maintenance license now why blank aircraft maintenance license because you don't have any aircrafts attached to that license now what do you need to do to attach a type of aircraft into that license you need to do something called a type rating course now a type rating course is an extensive course on one single type of an aircraft and um, you have to go through a training which which includes a theory training theory exam practical training and a practical exam and once you have completed that and then you can get the certificate send it back to civil aviation authority and now you will get a license endorsing your type rating or the type rating program you underwent so this is a very small introduction on the steps of how to become an aircraft maintenance engineer what specific skills are actually required to be a competent pilot or aircraft engineer so some basic uh, skills you have to have a good knowledge of maths able to uh, read write and speak um, english and most importantly you need to have a positive attitude towards learning and towards others you're going to be flying and working with people from different countries different cultures you will fly with uh, young people old people inexperienced experienced and you would really need to adjust your attitude and um, able to deal with these guys in a respectful manner now there are a couple of skills that is required to become a good competent aircraft maintenance engineer don't get me wrong these skills can be improved by anyone so number one is listening skill now listening is very important where because aircraft maintenance engineering as i said previously it's shift based so there can be a time where you are overtaking a task from someone so you need to have good listening skills in order to understand what that person have done and up until where in the task they have done and also it is vital to ask them what problems have they faced while doing this particular task so when you overtake you know up until where the task is completed and the problems they have faced so i see listening as a very important skill in aircraft maintenance secondly good level of communication because as aj said you need to be working with different people from different nationalities people from different cultures so you need to have that professional communication skill in order to convey the message in a clear way also keeping it professional so you won't hurt someone's feelings is there much importance when it comes to the English language to the jobs mentioned? So English language is extremely important to become a pilot. You will have to take an English test at the beginning of your studies, which they call a radio telephony test. Uh, some countries, they do it in the simulator. Um, others, they do it um, face to face with an examiner. And in some other countries, they do it. Uh, it can be done online as well. Uh, once completed, you will, they will give you a score from 4 to 6. 4 is the minimum and 6 is the maximum you can get. So, uh, as far as I know, if you get score 4 or 5, you will have to repeat the test every few years to keep it current. But if you get level 6, then it's valid for life and you will never have to do a radio telephony test ever again. As AJ mentioned, 
English is extremely important when it comes to aviation. Now, aircraft maintenance engineering, we do not have a specific English requirement. However, if someone have completed their GCSC and they have a credit pass or a C pass or above, that is the level of English we are looking for in aircraft maintenance. Now, there is another reason why you need to be confident in English. And number one is all the technical documentations, all the aircraft manuals, all the design organization leaflets, they come in English. And you need to be in a position to read and understand and execute these documents. What rankings or levels do you have starting from a student? Uh, now talking about pilot ranks, when you've completed all your flying courses and you have a license, then you are ready to join an airline. So. Hopefully, after you get the job with an airline, you will join as a second officer. And after you have around five, 1,500 hours, you will become a first officer, then a senior first officer. Then a few years later, when you have around four to 5,000 hours, uh, you will become a captain. Now, it depends on the airlines. Some airlines will upgrade uh, the first officers to a captain position when they have around 4,000 hours. Some will do it when they have 5,000 hours and in other countries they do it at the earlier stage when they have around 3000 hours so it depends when you're flying you will get upgraded to a captain position and then another few years after that you can become a training captain with the airline you're flying with so in aircraft maintenance engineering we do have levels however different companies incorporate different level systems so you can, for good example is someone fresh out of the university or school can, can be categorized as an aircraft mechanic now the same position some other company might call them aircraft technicians but usually aircraft mechanic or a junior aircraft mechanic will be the lowest level that is your starting place now with experience as an aircraft mechanic your company might promote you to become a technician now there are some institutions in order to become a technician you need to have your modules completed or you need to have a blank aircraft maintenance license now again this can differ from company to company so you start as an aircraft mechanic and then you climb your way up to be an aircraft technician then when you have your license and type rating you become a licensed aircraft maintenance engineer now there is something called category C license usually most companies call them engineering team leaders but their work scope is like kind of like a project manager and some also do call them chief engineers and after that you could go to a manager's position or you could move into a different role can you tell us about a day in the life of an airline pilot aircraft engineer uh, so a working day as a pilot can be very different um, as we said earlier it uh, depends on the uh, flights we're doing some flights are very short some are very long so for example if I'm doing a flight to Doha it takes only about an hour but if I'm uh, flying to India it takes four to five hours to get there and uh, to get there uh, but usually I get up have a coffee check the flight information which will be in the email um, get ready go to the uh, airport meet with the rest of the crew and then head to the aircraft prepare everything uh, sign the paperwork and then we start boarding and that's it ask for pushback and get going i'll talk about base maintenance because i haven't heavily been involved in line maintenance uh, most of my career i was working in base so you start with the coffee coffee is a must and then you go to your work and and the first first thing in the morning you will have a briefing from your team leader and your engineers and your engineers will give you task cards basically what to do and usually you would get two task cards if the tasks are small or one task card if a task is big so you do your task within the day and then right before you leave you need to do a tool check and also store check as well now tool check is you go to your individual toolbox and see every tool is there and also you go and check in your stores whether you have any borrowed tools from the stores now you need to make sure that none of these tools get into the aircraft and once those things are done you could close down any paperwork you have and then get ready to say goodbye for the day would you give any advice to young enthusiasts who are looking to step into these mentioned job roles now since it's uh, quite difficult to get that first airline job when you finish your studies 
um, due to the lack of experience, um, then I strongly suggest you to do your uh, courses with a, with a school or with a flight academy where they secure you a job with an airline after you've completed all the courses. There are a few airlines which are doing this, um, such as EasyJet, uh, Wizz Air, Air Arabia and Qatar Airways. Um, there are actually a lot more airlines which are offering this. You can search on Google. Uh, you can do this through the MPL route or the usual normal uh, integrated ATPL route. Now, it, the best place to do your, your training, in my own opinion, is Europe. They have really good standards. Uh, yes, it's slightly more expensive than other, other places, but it's worth it. But again, as we said earlier, if you want to fly in the US or in Australia, for example, then it's uh, useless to study in Europe as you will have to repeat the exams again, the flying tests again to get the required licenses to, to, to fly in the US or in Australia. So, uh, but if you want to fly in a country where they accept all licenses, then Europe is a really good choice. My only advice is if you're thinking about it, do it. Because aircraft maintenance engineering is such an exciting career to have. You wouldn't do the same job every day. You will be doing different tasks. You wouldn't be sitting in front of a computer. You will be hands-on on the aircraft. And that feeling you get when you see your aircraft finally flies, that feeling is very, I can't, I can't put words to it. It's, it's very, this proudness and also this emotional connection to that aircraft would give you that satisfaction. So my only advice is, okay, if you're really thinking about becoming an aircraft maintenance engineer, and if you have questions and confusions, you can always come to me and ask those questions, clear them out. And yes, if you're really thinking about it, just do it. This is it for today, guys. If you like this video and you would like to see more in the future, then please don't forget to give us like and subscribe. And I'll come back with another video next week. Until then, keep fixing. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye.